Good morning. We gather for worship in the midst of a national crisis, one that has been brewing for some time and reached a tipping point this week, this week, when the number of those who have died from COVID-19 in less than three months surpassed 100,000, a disproportionate percentage of which are people of color whom our healthcare system has failed all their lives. This week, when over 40 million Americans filed for uninsurance, and those deemed essential workers, again, disproportionately people of color, on the lowest end of the pay scale and with insufficient protection to keep them and their families safe. This week, when we have witnessed the latest killing of an African-American man by a white police officer in Minneapolis, George Floyd's death was not an isolated incident, but rather the latest example of police and vigilante brutality and disregard for the lives of black and brown people in this country. His death triggered one of the sustained, largest sustained expression of both peaceful and violent protest that we have seen in decades. It is about his death and so much more. And we here at Washington National Cathedral and the Episcopal Diocese of Washington, we add our voices to the collective outrage, grief, and frustration. We add our resolve to those determined that this moment cannot and will not pass without movement toward real and lasting change. We are followers of Jesus and his way of love. Today, we are praying for the power of the Holy Spirit who's coming to us, we commemorate this day. And we renew our commitment and that of the institutions we serve to keep our eyes and energies fixed on addressing the root causes of systemic racism and white supremacy in all its forms laid bare before us by COVID-19 and the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and so many more. This is a crucible moment when it has never been more clear that the soul of our nation is at stake. If our elected leaders cannot meet this challenge, we, the faith leaders in this country, must be among those stepping into the void, and we will. But this nation must rise together in November to elect the leaders we deserve. We need and must insist upon political reform, moral clarity, and effective governance from our elected leaders. Today, we gather for prayer. Prayers of grief and repentance, prayers for strength and resolve, and to hear the spirit-inspired words of our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, and his exhortation for us to yet again choose love. Scripture is clear that God is not moved by the beauty of prayers that are not accompanied by the power of our deeds, to choose love and to work for justice. May God grant us the strength and courage for the living of this hour. Amen. Amen.